In this part, I'm going to introduce the various ruler tools which can be used for backgrounds and such. Rulers can be selected via the ruler icon in the tool palette. There are various kinds of rulers. Their functions will help you draw beautiful lines on the digital canvas. For example, let's select the linear ruler and a purple line will be displayed like this. The ruler icon is displayed on the layer in the layer palette where the ruler is placed. When the ruler icon is on and the ruler is activated, lines will be drawn along the ruler. You can move and transform rulers by using the object tool to move them to different places on the canvas. There are a number of different ruler tools. Curve and figure rulers are some of them, but I would like to show you a particular set of rulers. They are called the special rulers. Before placing any special ruler on the canvas, select the kind in the tool property palette. If you select parallel lines for the ruler and drag it on the canvas, you can easily create parallel lines. Unlike the previous ruler, the special ruler influences the line drawn anywhere on the canvas. With a parallel line ruler, you can only draw lines parallel to the direction of the ruler. There are other rulers, such as the Parallel Curve Ruler, which allows you to draw lines parallel to a curve. Then, there is the concentric circle ruler to draw those types of lines. These rulers can be moved later by using the object tool. So after you draw two circles, deactivate snap the special rulers in the command bar. Now you can use the pen tool and hold shift to draw straight lines and connect the borders, like for a cup or a glass. There are also rulers that let you easily draw action lines, which are often used in manga. You can do this with the focus line ruler. If you place the focus line ruler on the canvas, you can only draw lines that gather at the center of the ruler, no matter where you draw on the canvas. Let's draw some effect lines for a manga using this. This ruler can also be used for one point perspective. There is also a special ruler specifically for vanishing points, however. I will next introduce the Perspective Ruler. There are two ways to create a Perspective Ruler. The first one is to select Create Perspective Ruler from the Layer menu, Ruler, Frame. Select the number of vanishing points and create the ruler by clicking OK. The second way is to create a perspective ruler by aligning the ruler along a pre-existing drawing or photo in this way. Select Ruler Tool, Perspective Ruler and create it. In line with the underlying drawing, I draw a line in the direction of the perspective. This will create one vanishing point. I use the object tool to select the ruler. The blue dots are the vanishing points and the green dot on the blue line is the eye level of this perspective projection. 
As with all the special rulers, if you try to draw a line on the canvas with the perspective ruler active, you can only draw along that perspective. You can only draw lines towards the blue vanishing point, as well as horizontal and vertical lines. With Clip Studio Paint, you can create multiple vanishing points with one perspective ruler. In this drawing, another vanishing point is necessary in the direction opposite to the one vanishing point. I will show you how to create the other vanishing point. Just as before, select the ruler tool, Perspective Ruler. Drag a line in another direction of the perspective and another one corresponding to that. With this, the second vanishing point is created for the perspective. With the second perspective ruler created, you can easily draw backgrounds with a two-point perspective. If you want to turn off the perspective ruler, deactivate Snap to Special Ruler in the command bar at the top right, or deactivate the ruler in the layer palette. Alternatively, select the object tool and click the ruler. You can deactivate it by clicking the square, which will change the ruler's line color to green. Rulers are generally effective only on the layer they are created on. However, you can click on the ruler in the layer palette and change the editing targets to even use them on different layers. A perspective ruler can be changed to have three vanishing points by adding the third vanishing point. With the Perspective Ruler created, select the Object tool and click the Perspective Ruler again. In the Tool Property palette, you can display a grid by using the Grid button. When displaying the grid, the grid along the perspective created in this way is displayed. You can change the size of the grid in the Tools Property palette. You can draw additional items and characters, etc. along the perspective using this. You can also use the grid. With the grid displayed, you can snap the lines to the grid by activating Snap to Grid. The ruler tool also affects tools other than the pen and pencil tools. For example, select the marquee tool Rectangle. If you use the Rectangle selection tool while keeping the perspective ruler active, the selection will be made along the perspective automatically. Since watercolor, oil paint, decoration brushes and figures are also affected by rulers, they can be used in various ways. If you want to move a ruler to another layer, simply drag the ruler icon in the layer palette and move it to another layer. Next, I want to show you the symmetry ruler. The 
The symmetry ruler is created by drawing a line like this. Once created, drawn lines on one side are also reflected on the opposite side of the ruler line. You can use this to draw rough sketches of a person facing forward or other simple symmetrical shapes. When creating a symmetry ruler, you can select the number of lines used in the tool property palette. For example, if you create a ruler with 10 lines, a line you draw in one place is reflected across the remaining 9 lines as well. This is great to make simple patterns, lace or magic circles.